Hello, it's Michael from Fujifilm. This contraption is called a view camera. This particular one was designed to use 4 inch by 5 inch sheet film that would go on the back. The lens would be attached here and in the middle would be an expandable bellows that allowed these pieces to move back and forth for focusing. But what really makes these, these cameras important is that these standards that hold the parts allow the lens and the film plane to be moved completely independently of one another. They could swing, they could tilt, and they can shift up and down. All right, why is that important? Well, by changing the way the projection of the image lands on the film plane, you're altering the geometry of that image, and therefore you're correcting for distortions, or you can create distortions if you want them. Also, by moving the lens up or down relative to the film plane, it's kind of like moving the entire camera up and down on a ladder, and that can come to your aid in some very, very tight situations. So. Who like these kind of things? Who is this best for? Well, architectural photographers and commercial product photographers, of course, but landscape photographers and, believe it or not, even portrait and wedding photographers can make use of these kind of movements. Most photographers do not need a fully articulated film back, but what they really want is an independently movable lens. So users of our popular GFX camera systems have been asking us to make tilt shift lenses for quite a while. All right, so introducing GF 30 millimeter F5.6 TS and GF 110 millimeter F5.6 TS macro. This is macro because it will focus down to 17 inches. Very, very helpful for product photography. Both of these lenses will be available in fall 2023. Uh, the TS 30 millimeter is going to be $3,999 and the uh, 110 millimeter is going to be $3,499. So these are made to very, very high optical standards. Now, one of the most important things in creating a tilt shift lens is being able to have a really large image circle coming out the back so you can have the freedom to move that lens around as necessary. Our sensors have a diagonal of about 55 millimeters on the GFX cameras. So we had to make an image circle of almost 85 millimeters on these lenses. We can shift them 15 millimeters in either direction. That's an incredible amount of shift. The tilt is about eight degrees and 10 degrees respectively for the different lenses. So um, they are very, very easy to use. And I should point out they are manual focus only, okay, no autofocus. And you'll notice there's no aperture ring on them either. So they are electronically aperture controlled. That means you'll have to use the front or the back wheels to change the f-stop. They are really nice and friendly. And you can see they have locks and knobs on both sides to be able to uh, affect those controls. One of the things you can do is you can actually release the internal lock here that's on the lens and rotate the camera 90 degrees. And that way you can get the controls going in a different direction if you want. Also, the 30 millimeter lens has a built-in mounting collar. So this collar also allows the entire contraption to be moved as one. This is very helpful in this kind of a vertical mode for landscape stitching. When you want to shoot multiple vertical panels and put them together to make a large panorama with additional uh, pixels. Well, instead of swinging the lens this way, which can create uh, distortions, you fix your camera in the middle of your stitch and instead you shift the lens left to right and create ver multiple vertical panels that way. That's kind of handy. So how are these things used? Well, one of the most common ways is to create perspective correction 
When you're shooting verticals, as you know, when you tilt up, the vertical lines recede. So to eliminate that, instead of tilting up, you move the lens up. And this is effectively, like I said earlier, like going up a ladder. You are elevating the entire image and therefore you can keep the camera level and look straight on. Obviously very handy for architectural purposes, but also if you're commissioned to say photograph large works of art, either in uh, someone's home or say in a museum and you have limited space to back up. Well, instead of being forced to tilt up, you can shift the lens. Also, it's really nice to know that uh, we have incorporated sensors in the camera, uh, in the lens rather, that the camera can read the rotation and amount of shift from the lens. So you can make notes of that and that uh, information will appear as metadata in image correction software. So if necessary, you can go back and duplicate an image that you shot on location before. Um, another thing that I use a lot, uh, in, especially like I said in product photography, is the tilt. Because what happens when you tilt the lens is you're changing the axis of where the light goes through all that glass. By changing the axis, axis you affect the depth of field. You can make it more or less without changing the f-stop. So in an example like this product shot of this T set, what if you only have one light and it's only of a maximum wattage, okay? Well, you can stop down, but then you have to jack up the ISO. Instead of that, just tilt the lens and the lens will bring things into focus beautifully, front and back. And then you only maybe need to stop down a tiny bit instead of going all the way to F22 or F32, which causes diffraction uh, problems. Now, uh, another useful scenario for using the tilt is actually, is say, in a large group portrait setting. So those of you that are wedding photographers, think of you know, all the bridesmaids or the groomsmen, right, standing side by side. Well, instead, what if you want to stagger them front to back? Well, one solution would be to stop down like crazy. But then again, now you have to up the ISO and that can cause problems, right? Instead, you rotate the camera in such a way that you can sw uh, tilt that optical axis to get the front and the back as close to perfect focus as possible without having to change the f-stop. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy using tilt shift lenses for your GFX system.